am so excited to learn that this weekend you extended the call to the Reverend Katie McCown to be the senior minister at Emmanuel Baptist Church. And I'm glad Katie accepted. I'm excited for her and for the church. I'll be praying for her and for the church as she makes the preparations to come to be on the field here in Paducah in the next several weeks. We continue our journey through Lent and uh, I wanted to take an opportunity to think through some of the I am sayings of Jesus. We looked at one last week. We talked about Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. And so this week I want to move uh, to another I am saying from the Gospel of John. And this one, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. The Gospel of John is filled with wonderful and beautiful imagery. And two of the themes that run through dark through the Gospel of John is the theme of darkness and light. It's found from the beginning all the way to the very end. And so let's start there at the beginning in John chapter 1. And let's hear the first few verses of John's Gospel. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Well, then let's move to John chapter 8, where Jesus tells us, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then later on in the Gospel of John in chapter 9, you hear these words of Jesus, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Well, light and darkness play a prominent role in the Gospel of John. In chapter 3, we're told of the story of a man by the name of Nicodemus who comes to see Jesus to try to learn more about who Jesus is. John tells us when Nicodemus comes to see Jesus, he comes in the cover of darkness. He doesn't want anyone to know just yet that he wants to know more about Jesus. Later on in the Gospel of John, as Jesus and his disciples are sharing that last supper, just before Jesus is arrested, just before he's betrayed, we're told that Judas leaves the room. Judas is the one, of course, who's going to betray Jesus. He was in the room with Jesus and the other disciples sharing that supper, but John tells us he leaves. We as the reader know that Judas is going to betray Jesus. He is leaving to do that. And John tells us when he left, it was dark. Light and dark. Prominent themes in the Gospel of John. I think they're prominent themes in our world today. But we don't have to look very far to find some sense of the darkness of the world around us. We see it in uh, people who are hungry. We see it in those who are homeless. We see it in places where there is great devastation, in places where people are in the midst of war. We see it in places where hatred strongly exist. And I suspect, if you and I are honest, we might look in our own lives and see that, yes, at times, darkness can be in my life as well. But there is hope, and that hope is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. And it doesn't take much. If you and I look around our world today, we can see examples of the light of Jesus. It is all over creation. If John is right, and I think he is, that nothing has been made that he didn't make, then we see examples of the light of Jesus everywhere. I told you about the um, 
Easter daffodils that I see growing as I make my way from Bardstown to Paducah each weekend. Here at school in Harrodsburg outside the chapel window are two, um, I think they're crab apple trees. They're, they're blooming beautifully. They're bright pink. I think it may be a little bit early yet, but they're blooming, and I'm glad they are because it reminds me of the light of Jesus. If we look around us, we can see that light. We can see that light in people providing for others, taking care of others, looking out for others. Sometimes we think about the light of Jesus. We might call it compassion. In, in one of my classes this week, we've been talking about the compassion of Jesus and, and then the ways that we can be compassionate toward others, the ways that we can express care for others. I think when you and I do that, um, we, we can become, in part, the light of Jesus Christ shining in our world. I, I remember a song that I learned as a child, and I suspect some of you remember it. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. But you can remember the tune, and I suspect it begins to ring in your mind. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine all over the world, all over my city, all over my neighborhood, this little light of mine. It is a reminder that we are the light of Jesus to those around us. And we have an opportunity to share the light of Christ with others. And, and I think that's a wonderful gift. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us. I like that imagery of light and darkness. It reminds us of all that Jesus does for us. I can remember, um, it's been many years ago now, I was just a, 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 maybe a teenager or maybe just before middle school. The years passed too quickly. But I can remember going to my grandparents and I loved helping haul hay at my grandfather's farm. He belted in those small square bells that you could pick up and you would throw them and load them in a pickup truck. And I remember one particular summer, one day, we were hauling hay from a field and it became dark. You could hardly see in front of you. My daddy was driving uh, the pickup truck and I came to the side of the truck where he was driving and he said, Tommy, are you doing okay? I said, I'm doing fine, Daddy, but it's a, it's a little bit dark. He said, well, we have the truck lights on. Just stay close to the truck, and the lights will show you the way to go. I've thought about that story and that moment in my life often. And I think much of what Jesus does for me is come beside me and say, Tommy, are you doing okay? And sometimes I say, Jesus, sometimes I'm not doing okay. I don't know the way. And it's almost as if Jesus says, Tommy, stay beside me. I am the light of the world. I'll show you the way. What a wonderful Lord we serve who cares enough about us to be the light of the world. I hope you have a great week. I'm looking forward to being with you this Sunday again and sharing with you. And I look forward to praying for Katie and for the church as she looks forward to coming to be the senior minister at Emmanuel. May God bless you this day and every day.